Hi everybody, I'm Christian from Trace5 and welcome to the seventh game from the Euros 2018 from Birmingham. Now for this game, again, we've teamed up with Neon Redding Grid, who were so kind to provide us with and the audio of the live commentary that was recorded on their stream. And so for this game, we will be hearing Seamus and Dave Hoyland. Uh, once again, a uh, reminder that uh, we're going to show a different perspective than the one that was shown on the stream. So every time the commentators talk about the left side, they actually mean the right side from our perspective now. Otherwise, enjoy! Hello and welcome back to the Neo Redding Grid stream. Uh, I am Seamus and commentating with me is Dave Hoyland. Hi Seamus. That is probably the nicest Dave will be to me for the rest of this cast. Uh, you join us uh, where we are having Dominic uh, running as Valencia against Chris on CTM. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see the CTM list in action. Uh, it's the same one that I took, uh, not to the same success as Chris. Um, but it is a hot list with some uh, spicy includes that I'm hoping we'll see make some splash on the table. Are you excited to see some Valencia, Dave? Um, so this is probably the favourable matchup for Chris, I would say. Uh, yes, probably. Because the other side of this matchup is Dominic on combo CI, where it, it's a bit like the old hasty CI, often scores one agenda, then the following two, but can actually score all seven or ones. Um, so I think this is probably the matchup that Chris wanted. Yep, and uh, obviously we tested a fair amount against Val. Uh, we found CTM reasonably favoured in a quite close quest close matchup. Um, I presume your spicy tech card you're talking about is uh, Bouncy Asset? Yes, Amani Sinai. That's uh, what I said. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, when an agenda is scored or stolen, uh, you trace with the base strength of the advancement requirement of the agenda to bounce a runner card to hand. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, this is pretty good because it disrupts the runner's board while you're advancing your own game plan. You know, you want to be scoring quickly with CTM. You also frequently bleed a GFI or two. So adding a five credit tax to that process is pretty nice. Um, you also occasionally get really comedy targets, like if someone installs a liberated last click or uh, if someone's on a linky drippy deck and you just bounce their link card, uh, making all their underworld contacts blank. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, the other one, we've got a product placement, uh, which was a last minute include and has been at best moderately impactful in a handful of games across four of us playing the list yesterday, uh, no, yesterday, Friday. I am very surprised. Chris and I uh, briefly spoke about the blacklist inclusion. Yes. Um, considering how much Val there was, I'm surprised that that wasn't something that was con like actually went forward and um, kind of did well. Yeah. I think the problem is that you don't have a huge amount of ice and an unres blacklist is an annoyance but not massively impactful in my view. Are there any unusual includes in Dominic's Valencia? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it looks, uh, so looks very standard. I guess that the one of Ice Carver and the one of Mad Dash are the ones where you don't see them and they're not in everything. Sure. Other than that, it is pretty standard. Yeah. Um, Got an Abakua, a retrieval run to get it back. Yeah, it's um, pretty standard. Yeah. Um, this is kind of like Reg Dex 101, right? Yeah. Um, so, why are you wearing glitter? Ah, well, uh, last night I was able to indulge in my other hobby, getting very drunk, uh, because I did not make top 16. So we had some Buckfast for the Run Last Click panel and then a whiskey meetup where everyone brought bottles of whiskey and then Guy's partner, Lara, uh, started putting glitter on people's faces. So I got a piece of that. And then probably didn't wash very well this morning because I was feeling terrible. <laughs> oh, makes you look lovely. Thanks, thanks. I can see if she's still around if you want to. <laughs> I just about to swear a lot in this question. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, we've been instructed to be on our best behavior while commentating. How do we get chat on this? I should probably look at chat. Uh, I don't know if we can access chat. Joey, can we access chat? Or are the people commenting? Uh, yeah, so if you click on the, on the thing on that, yeah, you'll see the chat there. But that's the best you can't really do it and it's not really much. To be honest, it's right. You can resize that, that helps, I'm sure. Uh, people in the comments, we are fiddling with our screens so that we can see what you're saying, but we may forget to read them. 
Uh, oh, we have an opening. Chris has uh, installed two remotes, so I guess his first click must have been drawing. Uh, didn't take the credit. No. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, so, ch chat is asking for uh, <laughs> me to be horrible to Seamus, just so. Uh, oh, double bankers. That's um, interesting. So that's worked out quite well for Chris because Dominic's had a slow start and wasn't able to challenge him. If he'd had a couple of dirty laundries, then both of those could be gone with only a single ID trigger. So I would have possibly expected Chris to be a bit more conservative with, than that and maybe put one out, get the ID trigger, and then put the second out the next turn. I used to like Dean until he started posting in this chat. <laughs> Joke. Uh, so... We've got an ICE remote, which is almost certainly an AR enhanced security or a Rashida, um, both incredibly high impact uh, for Chris to get protected at this stage in the game. Um, we do have a bunch of breakers in the bin, and I wonder if Dominic should be challenging that remote. Certainly if it's an AR enhanced, he wants to go for it. If it's a Rashida, it's a little bit more touch and go. So he, he's now got enough money. Oh, okay, so he probably won't now, he's dropped an earth rise. When he was up on money, it's something you'd consider. Um, because you just need to keep above hard hitting news. He's, he's just conceding that. Um, hard to say what his win condition is if he lets these bankers roll. Oh, and that's bad. Yeah. So I don't really know where he goes from here, right? Because he basically needs turning wheel pretty soon and then to start like building up those counters. Yeah. Um, so one potential uh, out that he does have, CTM centrals are vulnerable and we have cut C source from the deck. So hard hitting news is your only proactive tagging. So Chris will hopefully be looking to ice up R&D. Um, ideally, oh, there goes the turning wheel. So this is the out, um, oh, but no run. Yeah, I mean, he needs it. But... So I would even be looking to put MVTs on centrals here. Um, to stop poking around. Uh, yeah. I did see an MBT in Chris's hand. Uh, Chris, of course, sporting the full art cards from his own world champ deck. Uh, and the alt, um, which I believe is by uh, Alexis Spicer. It's very nice. So... I mean, this draw looks really good for Chris. It's very good, yeah. Although, you know, it, it would not have taken an exceptional Val start to kill both those bankers and leave Chris with two of his best cards gone and not a lot happening board-wise. So, it's been fortunate that his start's been accompanied by a cautious one from Dominic. So, we've just seen um, Dominic knock over the top card of R&D, which Chris has seen. So they're, they're just getting a judge to tell them what to do. They might have to shuffle or something. Sure. It's very unexciting. <laughs> so, Dave, would you say Chris is way ahead here? Do you think Dominic is already looking dubious on this, or is there a line back for him? So he's not out of it, but it's a lot of it's going to depend on what these Earthrise draws get him and if he's got enough economy. Um, if he doesn't... If he starts to dip, Chris will just basically score out behind a vanilla or something. Um, he knows Dominic's going to challenge his HQ and build up turning wheel counters yep. pretty much every turn. So I think Chris will put it in the remote if he can. Yeah, It's just safer. Um, so we have cut two DBS, and getting a DBS running here would obviously be fantastic for Chris. Uh, the other thing Chris will want to do is get something like a turnpike on centrals because that makes it very difficult to build turning wheel counters without going tag me, and obviously once you go tag me, you have a very limited window to use your turning wheel. Um, there are two, oh, uh, only a single index, and no, that's Chris's list. Two indexing in Dominic's, so a lucky indexing can make a big difference. So it'll be interesting to see what Chris does now with a load of extra cards. He might just jam a load of stuff out. Um, if he doesn't, you know, he might be. He might have drawn agendas. So it's trying to keep on top of what it looks like Chris has got. So the last 
asset in, he installed is probably a team, not that just the one just now, but the, is probably a team sponsorship. Hopefully, yeah. So this is where Amani Sinai can get really good as well. So with oh. the bankers uncontested, um, you can afford to pump a ton of money into the trace and bounce that turning wheel when it gets sort of even moderately full. Yeah. Would you check these remotes? And that is the Amani Sinai. What is this slander, Dean? So rude. Uh, so I think we do have the Amani Sinai on the board. Um, presumably the other one's a team sponsorship. I don't think you'd bother putting an MBT out blind here unless you're confident you can lend the, land the HHN, which you might be. Oh, and that is an MVT on HQ, or is that just... Uh, no, that's just Chris's hand, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. It is oh, an MVT. No, yeah. Okay. And we got a rebirth. So that's quite good. Omar? Well, uh, you actually rebirthed into Ed Kim in the cut, didn't you? Yeah. Made in... Oh, Jonathan. that's a QPM. I mean, sure. Um... It's As not assuming that card at the far end is a Manny Sinai. As Chris, I would have rezzed that pre-access because you've got infinite money from the bankers anyway. That Maybe. would be a nice little tax. Oh, it was DBS, not on a Manny. Fair enough. I mean, it's still great. Yes. So he is really far behind now, I think, Dominic. It's, it's, it's looking pretty bad. Um, I would say it's somewhat dependent on what that ice is on R&D and I would probably give it a poke as him um, because if it is a paperclip or even an IP block you can still run R&D multiple times build up a big turning wheel and if you've got an indexing to finish that off and know when to unload it that's pretty strong interesting that Chris doesn't appear to be going for a score immediately so there's a good chance that the card in the remote is... Um, Calibration testing. Yeah. yeah. So, and then because there's team sponsorship next to it, there's a, I imagine one of Chris's game plans will literally just be to kind of um, wait for Beals and then reinstall it. Yeah, so it's, he probably really wants a second team sponsorship as well because if you can get your Calibration back and a Rashida to go and find the next agenda to trigger the whole process again that's that's where things get real spicy yeah uh, so we do have an ip block on r d you can credibly run through that with some regularity although he is putting the paperclip in i suppose he doesn't want to risk ah we uh -huh. have an amani sinai okay and a beal wow something's getting bounced it is but uh dominic is now up three points and i would say when you hit four the well, I'm going to have to go tag me because I lose next turn. Ham on uh, centrals can frequently get you four points. So, so, so what would you bounce if you were Chris? Uh, I think the turning wheel. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, pretty much, I think there's no doubt, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, we got a reader. I believe that was a uh, run last click prediction that someone would read. Amani and I. Uh, commenters asking if Amani Sinai can bounce the turning wheel. She can bounce anything. It's pretty spicy. There oh, we go. What a shock. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, he's run R&D twice, scored two agendas, so... Uh, it's pretty strong. Yeah, maybe just continue with that and uh, that'll be fine. Low on money that's a liberated going down. But he manages to get eight off it before a potential score with a man he firing. hitting news here is Chris uh, even though Dominic can clear the tags yes I think you're so far ahead 
him taking a turn out, losing eight credits, is basically just going to cripple him, um, which will give you lots of opportunity. So I don't really see any reason why not to. Ooh. So challenging the GFI in the remote, presumably. This seems a little bit risky with Mad Dash in the deck. Well, he's not a match point. No, but this would put him on six. Yeah, true. Um, and then it's one lucky central access. I really don't love that. I mean, it's sensible for it to be in the remote. Sure. Um, I would have put it in the bin. Always check a GFI in the bin. I'd, I think when he probably did it, he didn't have enough cards. Yeah, no, no. I could be wrong. No NGO in Chris's uh, deck commentators. Uh, commentators? Uh, commenters uh, <laughs> wondering so uh, if it's anything other than a GFI uh, I will be very confused and that is the Mad Dash oof yeah. it could be that Chris is buying me the beer he promised to buy me sooner rather than later he has to have such a strong follow up to this I mean hard hitting news at least and then it is the GFI going to six points Manny Sinai bounces something, but... Ooh. Yeah, that is... I mean... Hmm... I mean, so Chris has bounced the paperclip there, so that... There's a cost for him to go back into R&D. Um, yes. But we're... I don't understand why he felt the need to, um, to advance that GFI. So we know he has a preemptive in hand. Yeah. Okay. Install over it. So, yeah, install over it. He, he wouldn't have uh, mad dashed if it wasn't advanced. Agreed. The one annoying thing about preemptive is it does shuffle your deck, and if you've been bottoming agendas with DBS in a situation like this where you really don't want a load of agendas floating about for top decks, that might be a consideration, but I mean, you're giving away the GFI there anyway. I do think Chris is kind of telegraphing quite hard here that he's worried. Yes. Um, and maybe even has um, kind of agendas in hand by the fact that he's now started to ice HQ, whereas before he was probably like, well. Yeah. I mean, I suppose with paperclip bounced. Dominic is on enough credits that you can't prevent a few accesses here regardless. So I, I did feel that this was basically very favoured for Chris. Um, and now it, it is much more, you know, so there's no there's no kitties left, right? There's a, Chris only on one cat. Uh, so any... So you can come back from this. Exchange and 15 minutes give you... Uh, ways to dramatically manipulate the current score, uh, which if anyone can see is 6-1. to one. Um, But yeah, it's it's looking real tough for Chris not to bleed one more agenda here. Um, Dominic has chosen to clear the tags. I think that's right. I mean, he's got DBS firing if he doesn't, he, and he doesn't win basically straight away, there's a good chance Chris just goes exchange, and then it's probably good night at that point. Well, you could get sort of, let's say, probably an access in R&D and a couple on HQ, depending on what that ace is. Um, so how many agendas have we seen? Um, one, two, three, four. Yep. So of... 11, I believe. Uh, yep, 11. So Chris really needs to put a calibration in that remote because he can't risk putting an agenda in. Um, So I think that Dominic's good kind of line here is now build up board again. Don't like Chris is obviously worrying about a single access. Yeah. But Dominic should kind of build a bit. He does need to be careful for whatever he's building getting bounced with Chris scoring. That's one of the key things. Well, what I would assume is his best line here is draw for index and click for credits. You never take the risk of getting tagged. It's quite an unlucky indexing that gets zero points. Um, How many indexing is he on? Two. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, that could be pretty big. Uh, commenters, there is no sea source in Chris's list. Uh, the turning wheel is less of a good plan for him though because Chris can bounce it uh, with scoring and making a run opens him up for hard hitting news. Uh, indexing on the other hand is uh, a clean hit at R&D for the win. So the other thing we have to take into consideration is that Chris is not a risky player. Um, so the card in the remote is more likely to be something like a Rashida or a calibration testing than it is an agenda because um, all it would take is a stim hack for, you know, for Dominic to fairly safely check it. Um, and I think he is on three stim hacks, so... Uh, he is indeed. Yeah. Three stim hacks and the same old thing, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, and that would mean he'd get in, check the card, uh, and not have to worry about, like, a follow-up card hitting news. Yeah. Or any more than normal, anyway. So... Uh, thank you to the commenter reminding me that I am the commentator. It has been a long weekend. I will try and remember that. Just letting these people down, really, aren't you? I let everyone down, Dave. You know that. <laughs> so two DBS here is good for Chris. Um, how realistic do you think it is that Chris now spends mental energy exactly tracking where he's putting agendas in his R&D. Oh, I'm wrong. Look at that Beale scored. Oh! That is pretty wild. So that is like, that is Chris, Chris feeling like he has to take a risk. Yeah. That is not normal Chris Dyer playing. No. So we are we are only on two calibration testings rather than three, so, uh, or Chris's, I should say. Or was. Um, I, I know, but like, so Chris could have bottomed that and built. Um, I agree, but I think if you play too safely, if you wait for the perfect cards to come up, you give Dominic more time to... <laughs> um, yep, they've uh, betrayed the Crab Clan again by dropping to play Netrunner. Awkward. <laughs> it's all right. I was matched up against another Crab. Didn't make any difference. Glory for the Crab Clan. Yeah. Um, no one cares about that. No. So, so what's Chris's game plan? Okay, so he can't just be keep jamming because, you know, now that Dominic's been caught out by yes. it, he'll he'll probably start checking. I agree. However, Chris's scoring line is also pretty awkward until uh, Dominic runs because one of the Beals is gone. Um, so if he finds the other and scores it, he needs to score two more agendas. So ideally one of them is 15 minutes, but that still means he needs to advance or calibration testing two things out of that remote, um, which is a big ask when all Dominic needs to do is find indexing. Although holding five agendas uh, would be quite a good counter indexing play. Real bad if he runs HQ though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that uh Chris will do that, but you know. <laughs> He's just proven me wrong already. What do you even know, Hoyland? And that's an indexing. This could be it for Chris. Yeah. I mean, that's not even a good piece of ice, right? So. so the ice suite has nothing to keep people out because it's so important to be able to protect an Ares or a Rashida early, and you don't run rich unless your bankers run away. Uh, all of the ice is cheap, all of the ice is gear checky, except for a turnpike. Um, so that's why getting four points taken is such a problem because you can never stop them getting that last ditch attempt on R&D. So it's worth pointing out that this is actually um, pretty damn risky for um, Dominic. So he is dropping really low on credits to do this. Yes. So if he doesn't hit anything. He seems to be thinking about it, which suggests that he's not going straight back in. That could be that could be just what Chris needs. Shuffling even. Is this a troll play? Is he making Chris think he survived? Only to take an agenda off the top? Surely not. I don't know you, Dominic, but I'm sure you're not that mean. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, of course you do that. Um, it might be he's calculating cal like the cost to get back in, you know. It's true. It, maybe he doesn't have a stim hack or whatever. 
Oh, Chris, my fingers are crossed for you. Sorry to play favorites, uh, Dominic, I'm sure you're lovely as well, but uh, I love CTM and Chris is a good lad. Oh, that is so good for Chris. Yeah, like. So he must have hard hitting news with all this DBSing that's been going on. Yeah. If he doesn't, that's quite bad though. So it'll be interesting to see what Chris does. Ooh, it's a draw, so no score, which suggests, ooh. That is, okay. So it could be another Rashida. There's plenty of upgrades in the deck. There's product placement as well, cheeky product placement. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot of tag me now. Fortunately, Chris has built enough money up that even if the bankers get trash notes, not a big deal. We did see the cycle in hand, so going fully tag me could really solve Chris's somewhat dodgy um, scoring strategy Yeah. in terms of uh, properly scoring rather than the tags. But Chris must just be praying that he, you know, especially if he's got the exchange in hand, just praying that he can get that fired off before um, Dominic gets another access. Uh, commenters, there is only one QPS in the runner's score area. We don't know whether exchange is in hand. We do believe Psycho is. I mean, unless he's ditched it, it's definitely in hand, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't see any reason why he would. Yeah. So. Sponsorships are still in the deck, uh, but we have not seen any hit the table. Uh, so, I think the interesting side of the table now is actually on Dominic's, which is how do I maximize my accesses? Sure. Um, so you're Dominic right now, Dave. What are you thinking? So it's hard to know without knowing exactly what's in his hand. So if he has got a second indexing, I don't know, even know what card he's played there. Um, oh, indexing, there you go. Oh, uh, has he? Oh, shit. So he must have a stim hack as well to get back in. Or he could Omar potentially, but there's two bits of ice on archives. Ooh, is this gonna be I mean, the end for Chris? I mean, oh, that's an agenda there. So I think, I mean, you don't index if you can't get back in, right? So. This is almost certainly game. Fair number of cards left in Dominic's deck, so you could argue lucky to have the second indexing, but perhaps that's why he risked of going so low on the first, knowing he could hit a second and the DBSs would clear three cards off. Okay, so he's got an Aries on top or yep. somewhere in there. I think he needs a stim hack to get back in. Yeah. And if he doesn't have a stim hack, I think he's done. There, there we go. go. Yep, that's game. That's Oh. oh, so congratulations, Dominic. Commiserations, Chris. Yeah. So I really like games like this where it comes down to kind of not Chris winning next turn, but basically he were, Chris was going to be in such a good place next turn, like an exchange, a psycho, whatever. Yeah. Both, in fact, would have yeah. won in the game. Yeah. Um, so it's those kind of right. I'm. I'm done next turn, or very strongly yeah, after, yeah. Like, if not, so. Uh, Joey is just fiddling with the settings. <laughs> uh, so we can keep talking. Um, do you think, so Chris lost two agendas from two accesses right, right at the beginning of the game. That GFI play. That, that was probably the question play of the game. Yeah. Um, especially when, when you know he's got preemptive and can shuffle it away. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to speak to Chris and say, what is it you'd bottomed? Is, is that the reason you went for it? Sure. Or, you know. So he knew he, knew he um, had Matt Dash in the deck, not necessarily in hand. Sure. But, you know. I mean, you do take, you do have to take risks as CTM, but that felt like one that wasn't necessary at that stage. Um, 
perhaps just got greedy for the Amani Sinai trigger. There's a dangerous spice. You get to like the flavor. It really put him, it just put him so far back. Yeah. Right. Because um, then he spent all his time icing up, protecting. Um, and and CTM I, is so fragile too. And you could see Chris was like uncomfortable because he made a play which Chris doesn't make. He jammed in a remote mm. when his opponent could have literally just like waltzed in. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I mean that paid off, and it is that thing where if uh, if it had been anything else, and his opponent had checked, you know, particularly an MBT, that could have been the swing. So I can understand Dominic leaving it, uh, particularly being that far ahead and knowing you have indexing to fall back on. I mean, I would definitely have made that sort of play. Um, I just don't think it's Chris's natural style. I agree. Um, but the other option is maybe he felt he was safer in the remote than it was in hand um, at that point because. There's so much stuff that it could be in the remote. So I, I think that's a that is a fine assertion, but the actual act of scoring that thing out is so awful in terms of tempo. I mean, at least you had bankers, so the money wasn't an issue. But spending two turns and having to signal the agenda is really rough. Are you, you mean the GFI yeah. rather than the BO, yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't mind the BO play. Uh, the GFI play is, is, I think, the turning point of the game. Well, yeah, a three-point swing is always going to be, right? Um, I kind of want to just grab Chris and ask him, but uh, maybe that's rude. Um, shall I go and see if he wants to yeah, come well, and explain himself? Yeah, go for it. Okay, we're going to stop here. If you want to listen to the interview with Chris Dyer, you probably should tune into Neon Red and Grit on their Twitch channel. There you can listen to the entire interview and it's going to be really great. Uh, we're going to be back with the finale very soon. See you in a bit. And as always, Hack the Planet! Hack the Planet! Shut up and get in the car! Shit on me.